Welcome back, Chappelle. Welcome back to it. Welcome back to your last flip about Rome before we get straight into your test. So we are not going to dawdle around. We are not going to waste time. We are going to keep this bad boy under 10 minutes, right? We're going to keep it under 10 minutes, under 9 minutes and 59 seconds. Let's jump in right where we left off in class. I know it was C period because we got really, really into our review and stuff like that. But let's go ahead and go head first into what we left off talking about, right? So we talked about the Pax Romana. We looked at the baths that were constructed by Augustus. We looked at like the public restrooms, the aqueduct system, all that different stuff. But this thing right here is probably the biggest image of the Pax Romana. The Colosseum. Finished being built in 80 AD, what the Colosseum was, was a massive sports arena for the Romans to go and watch one of their favorite circuses of all time, gladiatorial combat, right? Which was the occasion where they would go and watch, usually, slaves, but about like 75% to 50% of gladiators were slaves, but about 25% of them were actually free men. But they would actually go in there and watch them fight one another, sometimes to the death. But only about 25% of gladiatorial combat ever actually ended in death. This right here that you can see inside is where the floor used to be, right? You see the intricate systems of tunnels and stuff like that. This bad boy sat 50,000 people. And look at these tunnels right here. This is actually where the gladiators would actually walk in and be raised up from underneath onto the actual stage and the actual flooring itself. That's me standing in the Coliseum. This, of course, is also this marble se seats that the senators would actually sit on. And another really cool thing I love about the Coliseum as well is the idea that apparently children would sometimes graffiti it and write their names on it and stuff like that or names of their favorite gladiators. They would do little like stick figure fights of gladiators fighting lions and stuff like that. But it wasn't just gladiatorial combat that you went to the Colosseum to see. You also could see beast hunts or magicians or jugglers or like all this other really intense stuff that you would go to witness these massive games that would actually be happening. And we showed this actually on the board in C period today. And I was like, what's that? And Brookshire was like, Circus Maximus. And I was like, what's that? And then like Devil's like, Coliseum. And like y'all know and have heard of this bad boy before, right? The Superdome is designed based off the Coliseum. The Romans used to go to it constantly. And they even apparently used to also let my wife in. That's my wife when we actually went to go visit it and stuff like that. But it's a massive artifact that's still there to this day. The uh, like gladiators would come in. They would sometimes, actually, this is another really cool fact, they would fill it with water, and they would have naval battles inside of it and stuff like that. And then these right here are the little lamp stoves that they would actually cook meat on, and these are writing styluses they would oftentimes bring inside with them. The Colosseum is super, super cool. We'll talk about it a little bit in class as well before your test. But the big thing you need to know about it is the Pax Romana is 200 years of Roman peace, right? 200 years where upwards of 80-something different, like or like 200 years of where literally numerous, 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 emperors would be in power, right? But the big thing about it is, in general, when you say Pax Romana, when you say Roman peace, it always kind of delineates the idea that you think all those emperors are going to be great. And they're not, right? So, like, not all the emperors are great. A lot of these emperors, or actually, or several of them, were really, really bad, right? So, like, now, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a few bad emperors really quickly, and then we're going to talk about the five good emperors, right? So the big thing about it is, for years after Augustus, Rome went through several good and several bad emperors. All of them attached to family dynasties, right? These family dynasties were like the Julio-Claudians, Julio the Flavians, and other families that would actually rule over Rome. Now, the worst of the out of all of them were the two big ones, right? Caligula, who was murdered by his imperial bodyguards, and Nero, who was murdered by his own military, right? Now, this is Caligula, the great, 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 great grand nephew of Julius Caesar himself, right? Actually related to him, and let's talk about his name really quickly, right? Caligula is not his real name. Caligula was a nickname that the Romans gave him, right? The big thing about it is his real name was Gaius, right? The thing about it is, though, is Caligula was short in stature and was given this nickname referring to the fact of when he was a baby, okay? So when Caligula was a baby, his father was actually a Roman general, and his father would bring him to Roman battles, right? And he would dress him up in a little tiny soldier's outfit. And remember the big metal studded shoes that the Romans would wear and create thunder when they would march on other enemy territories? Well, they even had a little pair for him, a little tiny pair of Caligas. And in Latin, when you say Caligula, it means little boots. It's what his nickname was, right? He was short in stature, covered in a light amount of fuzzy hair, and people like sometimes compared him to a goat. But the big thing about it in general is Caligula was nuts. He was known as the Mad Emperor, right? He was very, very crass, violent and extremely aggressive, right? And a little bit off his rocker. He sometimes would actually, like, like he had a golden statue of himself built inside the Senate and demanded that the senators dress it in whatever he was wearing that day, right? He tried to make his horse 
a consul at one point, right? You know, the consuls, the two elected officials of Rome. He tried to make his horse, Incitatus, which is actually Latin for galloper, a horse, like a consul at one point, right? Which is crazy. His horse, a consul. And then also Caligula was extremely violent, okay? The biggest thing about Caligula is he absolutely loved to watch people get executed, apparently before his meals, right? And a word on the street was that Caligula loved to see people sawed in half, as an appetizer before his meals, right? He loved to see people be executed in this way, where they would hang you upside down and saw someone from pelvis to throat in half in front of him while he was eating his meal, right? Absolutely wild dude, super, super creepy, but would end up getting stabbed to death by the Praetorian guards, right? And the other one is Nero. And for any of the parents that are actually probably watching this or overhearing it right now, Nero is that very famous emperor who apparently played the fiddle while Rome burned, right? The big thing about Nero, in general, is that phrase connects to one group of people he absolutely hated. Well, first of all, it's not his mom. He did hate his mom as well. Apparently, Nero kicked his mom to death, right, and actually killed her. But it was a big feud. Apparently, she tried to drown him at one point. But it's a whole thing, you know? Like mother, like son. But the big thing about it, though, in general, is Nero hated Christians, right? Particularly hated Christians. And one time, there was this massive fire that broke out all over Rome, and he blamed it on them. He blamed it on the Christian population that actually ran a certain district of this forum, and he blamed it on them, had the fire put out, actually did send money and didn't just sit there idly by while it burned down, but he sent firefighters there to quell the blaze and actually put it out. But he would then start a massive campaign of executing Christians publicly, right? He would hold giant plays, and if a person actually in the play died, like in a Greek tragedy, he would have that person replaced with a Christian, and it would actually kill the person on stage. Another thing about Nero is he loved music, Poetry and reading, but he loved reading at night. And the issue with that is he always felt like he didn't have enough light. So when he had this massive garden and forum built just for himself that was built on the site of where that fire broke out, he apparently would have Christians put onto large posts bound in straw and would have them lit on fire and he would read beneath them, right? And since he was so disgusting, so crass and so awful, his military actually made him dig his own grave and slit his own throat, right? And so that's how he ended up dying. But the big thing about it is those two guys are the really, really rough ones. Commodus was the one that thought he was a gladiator. Elagabulus is a whole different thing. This is Caracalla who was stabbed to death on the side of the road while he was going to the bathroom, right? So like the big thing about it though is we've got a lot of different bad emperors, right? Caligula and Nero being the worst. Remember, Caligula sawed him in half. Nero played the fiddle while Rome burned, right? The big ones, though, are the five good emperors, right? And at the very, very end of the Pax Romana, there were five great emperors that all ruled one after another, right? And the five good emperors, are, according to the like, historians, are the ones who brought the Pax Romana to its biggest heights, right? Now, the first one that came in, it actually came pretty quickly after Nero, actually. His name was Nerva, right? So the big thing about Nerva is he just happened to not mess up, right? This is a bust of Nerva right here. He just ruled peacefully, didn't do anything outlandish, didn't do enough to get stabbed by his guards, and just kind of kept things stable, right? So Nerva comes in and stabilizes the empire following a lot of these crazy emperors, right? Now Trajan is a big one as well. He actually grew Rome to be the biggest it ever would be, right? And so the big thing about it is he actually marked his conquest with this giant column, right? This huge column that's built in the city of Rome, and I've actually seen it, I'm the one that took this picture right here, it actually marked his triumph, bringing Rome to its absolute height, right? So the biggest thing about it as well is then after him, you had Hadrian, right? Hadrian is very, very well known for organizing the Roman bureaucracy and also building a massive wall. This is Hadrian's wall that actually cuts through the middle of England, right? And what the wall did wasn't really necessarily something to kind of prevent invasion. The wall was there for security measures, but it actually kind of fenced Rome in because Hadrian realized Rome was getting too big, right? It's getting way too large, and if it kept getting any bigger, it was going to topple all over itself, right? So he built this wall to kind of hold in Rome and keep it from getting any bigger, right? Hadrian is very, very important. You're going to need to know him for your test, right? And then you had Pius. Pius actually stands for peace. He just kept peace, and he never actually went to war with anybody during his reign and was just a very good level-headed leader. But then, out of all of them, you have probably the most important one, Marcus Aurelius, right? Marcus Aurelius is considered the best last emperor of the Pax Romana. He's considered the last emperor of the Pax Romana, and the years that would follow after him indicate the years that Rome would fall and topple in on itself. It began the fall period of Rome, but he was known as the philosopher king, right? He was a stoic philosopher and actually believed that nobody should actually be, like, he shouldn't, as a ruler, trying to be exude his own emotion. He should just be trying to do the best by the people of Rome. And as a Stoic philosopher, he wrote many, many volumes and did his best work as the emperor of Rome and like took over several other tribes. 
and brought Rome to other good heights, right? Now, the biggest thing about it, though, is it doesn't matter because no amount of good emperors can save Rome because the fall is coming. And we'll talk about that in the next unit when we insanely oversimplify the fall of Rome. But y'all have a good one. I'll see y'all then. Bye.